What can rugby union learn from rugby league? In this day and age of TikTok virality, short attention spans and a global cost of living crisis, it's not as easy to fill stadiums or get TV viewers that once historically was. With rugby union constantly jostling to maintain its position as one of the most popular sports in the world, it's had to adapt and modernize in order to stay relevant and attractive. However, it has recently experienced a worrying decline in both viewing numbers and playing numbers in some of its major markets. And in this video, we'll investigate if there's anything that it can take from rugby league in order to stay a global powerhouse. Firstly, why Rugby League? Well, let's not forget that Rugby League was originally established with the specific aim of producing a faster and more entertaining game to appeal to spectators. A new form of rugby with 13 men reduced from 15 gave more space on the pitch for attacking. Lineouts were banished, as were slow mauls and traditional rucks, and all were replaced with fast pay the ball restarts. Even scrums were transformed into non-contested restarts for knock-ons and balls out of play. All changes were designed to get the ball in the hands of the backs and to encourage attacking rugby at every opportunity. But what negative feedback has Rugby Union been receiving of late? And what can we learn from Rugby League in order to solve it? Well, one of the main complaints about the sport is that it's become too boring to watch. Stats this year from the Rugby Championship showed that in an 80-minute match, the ball was in play for only 34 minutes on average. That's less than 50% of the match. Rugby League, in contrast, has an average ball in play time of 62 minutes, which is over 78%. Now this is assisted by not having a traditional scrum and line-out, but what else are they using to speed up the amount of game time? Well firstly, they have shot clocks for scrums and goal line dropouts. A shot clock is a 30 second time limit for both packs to set and engage. Union desperately need to adopt the 30 second shot clock for the assembly of packs prior to engagement to stop the ocean of deliberate time wasting that has infected modern scrummaging. If they're not going to adapt this, well they could at least stop the clock when the ball isn't live, re when scrums and lineups are being set, as this wastes so much time in a match. If this seems too far fetched, they should at the very least adapt the stop the clock rule whereby during the last five minutes of an NRL match, the clock stops completely following a conversion or penalty kick until play restarts. This interpretation has added excitement during close matches and reduced potential time wasting. Whether it's Premiership Rugby, the stock market or even the housing market, everyone has experienced financial woes in recent times. The last year has been dreadful, even for the global economy. If you're looking for the right investment, this may be of interest. Today's sponsor, Masterworks, is an award-winning startup based in New York's financial district that's offering you access to a trillion-dollar asset class that has historically been resilient during economic crisis, according to the NW All Art Index. It's fine art. With Masterworks, you can invest in shares of million-dollar contemporary artworks, think Picasso, Banksy, Monet, without spending millions on an entire painting. This is the real deal. Just check the numbers. In the last 12 months when most investments were suffering double-digit losses, Masterworks paid out tens of millions of dollars in net returns to their investors. Outlets like the Wall Street Journal, CNBC and CNN are raving about the idea. Over 617,000 people have signed up so far. And RugbyPod subscribers can claim a free, no-obligation account today at the link in the description. Get involved and we can keep making videos like these. Rugby Union's also lambasted for being too over-officiated, which not only wastes time with the amount of TMO referrals used nowadays, but with the amount of cards handed out, it ruined an entertaining contest. In Super Rugby this season, there were 92 yellows and 10 reds. In the NRL, there were less than 20 players sent to the Simbin over the course of the whole season. Rugby Union also has a lot more penalties on average per game, which tends to lead to lots more time being wasted. Bringing in an orange card, which would be a 20 minute sin bin for more serious offences, may result in less one-sided clashes after red cards been shown. Some critics argue that the scoring system in rugby needs to be changed, as it encourages a conservative game plan, and there should be a greater disparity between a try's net worth and a penalty or drop goals. In league, a try is worth four points, conversions penalties two points, and drop goals just one point. The focus is to score tries rather than penalties, and the league code is far more exciting and action-packed as a result. Rugby Union has also been slated for having no personalities in the sport anymore. Christian Wade recently spoke out about how he and Danny Cipriani were scolded for dancing after scoring a try by Dai Young. And compared to NFL or the NRL, there are no viral superstars, interviews, content creators in the whole sport. It's all very dumbed down and conservative. In order to compete with other sports, this needs to change. The NRL is famous for having some of the most outspoken characters and entertaining figures in world sport, who are given a free license to entertain on and off the pitch. The same should be applied to rugby. There's also too much respect for the opposition, some argue, not enough chanting and atmosphere. We need to learn from football and the league's loyal fan base on how to make it an attractive proposition to go and see Rugby Union live. Finally, there's no real entertainment around the game. Both the Super League and the NRL do big live shows and entertainment around the finals, like the NFL do in the Super Bowl. But ever since the heydays of Max Gazzini's Stade Francais, this level of entertainment has gone missing from the sport. Another problem is too much rugby being hidden behind a paywall. 
Club rugby's always struggled to get primetime exposure on the TV in the UK, but it's done better in markets such as Australia. But with increasing investment by the likes of CVC in the sport, whose main model is to try and put all rugby behind a paywall and sell to the highest bidder, the problem's only going to get worse. In Australia, for example, there's been a 43% drop in the average Super Rugby audience since 2013. And within that figure, there's an even more worrying slump, with the 16 to 39 age group recording a 73% decline. The fact that Rugby League, Aussie Rules and Test Cricket is on terrestrial television, while Rugby Union's on paid television, is one of the reasons for this slump. Rugby Union also has a huge problem with it relying majority of them private school students to both play and watch the game. It's seen as anti-working class, and so misses out on the vast majority of people in the countries it's played in, especially the UK and Australia. The NRL in Australia has massively invested in its grassroots in the country and ensured it's more competitive both at a local club level and at academy level than Rugby Union. And as a result, it's attracting a lot more players and supporters. Its player base in Australia is now double what Rugby Union's is, and that's thanks mainly down to the investment in grassroots and the local level. If some of these changes do go through, it wouldn't be the first time that Union has turned to league for inspiration. Nowadays, the majority of leading teams are hiring a defence or attack coach with a Rugby League background and have already adopted many features from league. The rush defence, favoured by so many top-level teams in Union, has its roots in Rugby League, as does the end-over-end passing style. Plus, recently, the 50-22 law is an adaptation from Rugby League and has breathed new life into the game. In conclusion, there are a whole host of ideas and law changes that could be taken from Rugby League and applied to Union to make it a more attractive and entertaining spectacle. If we missed any, let us know what changes you'd like to see be enforced in the comments below.